Hello, my name is Lily Mae Martin. We are here today at the National Gallery of Victoria. I'm going to take you through a few drawing techniques and exercises so you can practice some observational drawing. We're going to use Marshall Wood's sculpture here, Musidora. So today we're going to go over some different mark making techniques that I like to use while I'm doing observational drawing and sketching. And this can be in terms of sketching artworks in the gallery, but also out in a park or in a, a public place. I'm assuming a lot of you will be working from home at the moment, so try and choose an object, not a photograph and not a picture. Try and pick something like a, a kettle or if you have a little sculpture at home. And the idea with these exercises is if you could just keep drawing the same object, so we're doing a lot of studies so you can build up some consistency that way. Also important to remember to not use erasers if possible. I try not to use them in these kind of classes because I do find it's a distraction. A lot of people worry about the final product and this isn't about that. This is about just getting you comfortable with drawing and building up some studies. And you know, we all make bad drawings and that's part of the process. So just embrace it because it's all about practicing drawing. It's also important that when you're setting yourself up for drawing to take some time to look at your object, really study your object and make decisions about what you're going to place on your page. Also try and be comfortable. If you're not comfortable when you're setting up to draw, you're not going to want to do it. So just try and take the time to create your workspace and choose an object. And when you've chosen an object, think about your light source. So if you're going to be near a window and depending on what time of day it is, if the sun's coming through, or if you have a little lamp that you can focus on one area and create a nice contrast with it, just think about these things while you're setting up. And feel free at any point to pause this video to take your time. We'll start off with a blind contour line drawing so we can get familiar with the object that we're going to place down on our page. So the idea of this with the contour is to put down the shape of the object and all the details within it just by using a line. And we're not going to look at our page and nor are we going to take our pencil off the page because this is about just getting comfortable with hand-eye coordination and taking the time to really observe the object. So you can go at the speed that your eye is tracing over the object and try and do it nice and slow so you're really taking in what you're looking at. So you can go into the interior of the object just by using the line. And we're not going to worry about what this is going to look like at the end, because this is just a drawing exercise. And I find this exercise really good to use in all different ways, not just with stagnant objects like this sculpture, but you could be out at Burke Street Mall or, or something like that with lots of people and lots of tram lines and you can go really fast trying to sketch some people. It's also a really good exercise to do in regards to portraits of people or your pets. So just really take your time with this one. And even if the object's not going to fit on your page, that's fine, just move up into your page and get the information down there because this is just about observing. Okay, there you go. That's the first exercise to warm you up. So after you've done a couple of blind contour line drawings, you can start thinking about what information you want to put down on your page. So this is the decision-making point. We've got lots of information here. We've got the plinth and the background painting, but what I'm going to just focus on for the moment is the sculpture in front of me. So I tend to like to do a bit of a margin, lightly, in pencil around my page, so I know that I have to try and keep it within the middle of the page. 
don't worry about having any fancy drawing tools or an eraser at the moment because this is just about training your hand-eye coordination and we're not worrying about the, the final outcome. So then we'll think about the object as in basic shapes. So firstly, I would see her from my angle sitting in a rectangle and I will try and lightly draw that out. And once I'm sort of happy with the length of her on the page, that's when I'll go back in and start breaking down the whole form. Just think about her head being a sort of square. The trunk. So while we're doing this, we're constantly going back and referencing points. We're doing this to try and get some proportion going. So I recommend that you lightly sketch in the whole of the object you're going to draw first before going in and putting in finer details because this is where you've got to try and plan out everything before going in and doing your shading and, and details. Because once you have this in and you're happy with it, then the rest of the drawing should go easier for you. And we're not going to worry about tonal work or anything like that at the moment. I think getting used to line, communicating shapes with line is really important as it helps you understand form and how to communicate that on page. So I'm just going back in and refining the details of the sculpture and notice that I'm moving lines about and again not using an eraser because that's distraction. So I'm still not worrying about finer details like fingers or toes yet because I'm still trying to map out the object as a whole. What's also good during this stage is to stop and take a look at what you've done already on your page and what you're drawing. If you can, try and move your board away from you and create some distance to really help you look at what you've done already on the page and what corrections you need to make. It's also very important to use a light leaded pencil, such as an HB, and draw lightly with it at this stage. So with observational sketching, I tend to like to use objects such as sculptures or, or furniture or something that isn't 2D. I don't tend to draw from paintings or other drawings because that's already quite flat and in our modern way of working we tend to reference a lot of photographs when we're doing our finished pieces. So when you're doing exercises it's a good idea to practice how to communicate form onto the page rather than copying from a flat image to another flat image. So I'm still referencing different reference points from one another where the, the bottom of the elbow is sitting to the top of the shoulder. It's good to try and keep jumping around the whole object doing this and not get focused on just getting one area correct. Otherwise you'll neglect the rest of it and it will become disproportionate. So remember to keep trying to pause and just have a look at your object and look at what you've put down. This is something you should do throughout the whole of this process. And even though hands and feet are notoriously tricky to draw, do try and have a go at them. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. 
And at this stage, you can start and going in and filling in some of the finer details, such as the folds of the blanket and the fingers and toes. Again, we're just using line at the moment. So don't worry about tonal works. I also find with drawings like these, just trying to do a line drawing of the whole object, sometimes setting a timer for yourself, such as for 20 minutes, will force you out of your comfort zone and move quickly to try and put as much information down on the page. Or you can take longer with these types of drawings. It's also good to leave some of your reference lines in there because this is, again, just an exercise, not a final piece, to go back and, and have a look at your work and, and find what works for you in terms of building up your drawing. So that's the line drawing. So now that we've learnt some mark making techniques, we can go back to our artwork or the object that we're referencing. And I'm gonna focus in on a detail of this sculpture, just so I can better show you how to use some of these techniques. So I'm just going to focus on the feet. And we'll start off with that breaking everything down into simple shapes again, constantly moving back and forth between your page and the object. And this again will take some time because it's important to try and get this as correct as possible. So I'm going to use a combination of hatching and cross-hatching with this as I find that that's the easiest sort of mark making to do while sketching. However, if you wanted to use tonal or stippling. And also it's nice to play around with the different mark making techniques with different drawings and you can see which ones that you like to work with best. And also you can use the weighted line once you're confident with your shapes. I tend to like to use this line in bigger pieces to sort of draw the eye to what's the focus of the work. And you can play around with weighted lines in different drawings as well with having different thicknesses, interacting with thin lines. That can also make a very interesting drawing. So I usually start off with some hatching Try and go in light first. Because it's better to build up your drawing rather than going in too hard and heavy and then having to get out an eraser and it can become quite a mess. So again, where the areas are darker, try and keep your lines closer together. And where they're lighter, have them further apart. You can also use your lines to follow the shapes of the object as well. I also find cross hatching and hatching really good for sketching because you can get it down so fast. And during this stage also pay attention to the light and the dark of the object. Sometimes I find people just draw where it's really dark but you'll see that not the whole object is true white, so it's good to try and get in there and lightly communicate the form with different, with darker and lighter lines. Don't be afraid to get in there. And you also notice with light falling on the object, how the shade is darker in certain areas and then it tapers out. 
to lighter. So you can communicate that with lines, again, being drawn on quite thick and close together. And then as the light tapers out, you can start moving the lines further apart from one another and draw them down light, lighter. And there you go. All right, so we're going to practice some mark making techniques. So just loosely grid up your page into quarters and then draw three circles. They don't have to be perfect at all. Again, we're just using the humble grey lead for this. So first we're going to practice cross hatching. And so why I have three circles on each is we're going to have light, mid-tone and dark. So with cross hatching, it's just a simple lines running parallel to one another. And for lighter, just keep the lead light on your page and space the lines out further away from one another. And then we'll have mid-tone, we'll keep them a bit closer together, maybe go a bit heavier with your Lead. Hatching is really good to use in terms of when you're sketching because you can get it down very fast. And then dark. Keep the lines close together. You can also follow the curve of the object as well. We're going to do cross hatching, which is like hatching. So we start off with our light. And then we're going to go back over it, hatching in a different direction. So we've got our make-believe light source coming in this way. So you could even think about keeping the lines closer together at the bottom here. You can have a play around with these, with different shapes. You can also start spacing the lines out a bit to sort of taper off from dark to light. Next, we're going to use a technique called stippling. So stippling can be rather time consuming, but it's a very good technique, especially if you're trying to communicate something a bit more delicate, such as flower petals or, or cloth. And what it is, is tiny little dots. This is our light tone, so I won't go too dark here. So keep them spaced, same with the lines, keep them spaced away from one another for a lighter shadow. This is often really popular to use with things like fine liner pen or ink. Again, if you're tapering off with the tone, you can space the spots out even further away from one another. Okay, so you have your light. Mid-tone, I'm trying to make the dots a little bit bigger and closer together. So I think also with these different mark making techniques, you can think about developing texture in your drawing, playing around with different techniques. Okay, and the darker one. Again, I'm just trying to make the dots a little darker by having them be a bit bigger and closer together. And finally, we're just going to use tonal, which is just nice and soft. And this is easy to get down as well. Some people like to smudge with it. It's a bit more gestural. 
which some people prefer. Also another thing to consider, now that we've got different mark making techniques that we can play around with, with your outside line or your contour lines, you can think about creating the illusion of a weighted line. So because we've got the imaginary light source up here, you could draw the line a bit lighter over here and then down the bottom with the shade, you can go in a bit darker and thicker with your line just to add to creating the illusion of weight with your object. And this is something that can be quite successful in conveying depth in your object when you're sketching. There you go.